Hello, everybody. My name is Ruin Aldred, and I'm here with Rosgris, the Boss Foss, and Leo Light. We would like to introduce you to the R&R podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. In today's episode, we're just going to kind of random on about some small talk, uh, talk about some upcoming games, issues we've been having with both the R&R podcast and Drinking Corner podcast, the group channel, a bunch of I other mean, stuff like that. We, yeah, we got, we got a we lot to touch base. probably address that one first. We got a lot to touch base on, and we're going to be talking about uh, some of the state of play stuff that was announced and a bunch of other things that's just been going on in our lives. And hopefully you guys are going to enjoy it. We're going to hopefully talk about some things that will interest you, especially if you're interested in the gaming world. But uh, yes, yeah, as, as Ross Grizz stated, let's address the elephant in the room real quick. And... The last episode of either R&R or Drinking Corner was August 12th and August 22nd. The 12th for R&R, the 22nd for Drinking Corner. Um, we, in those episodes, established that podcast episodes would be released every Wednesday and that we would do them regardless of how many people showed up. Yeah, listen. What happened, bro? <laughs> listen, things have been a little... Buckety. We we just have very busy schedules with David doing his job and only being available essentially two days out of the week. But out of those two days out of the week, you know, you have to have a life. You gotta you make plans, you've been doing stuff. You uh just recently celebrated a anniversary, was it? Or was it just a regular just date night that you guys did with Yeah, we 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 just had a date night. Which, uh, how was the date night? You got to see Young Gravy in concert. Uh -huh. That's pretty cool. You had to wait till I took a bite to ask the question, didn't you? I did. I waited perfectly. Uh, for those for you of you who are, who are just listening and not watching, I am actively trying to eat a Reese's peanut butter cup. And every time I go to take a bite, um, he keeps talking to me. I guess while uh, David takes a bite, this will be an no, opportunity. No, 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 take your bite I'll real quick. Take your bite real quick. So that way I could I'd do another part of the intro. Uh, just so you guys know, the Drinking Corner podcast and the R&R are both viewed on uh, their respected YouTube channels. R&R is on Rune Eldred. Drinking Corner is on Nerdgasm and Goodfellas. You can find the vidcast there on the YouTube channels, but you could also find us audibly as a normal podcast would be on any of your podcast listening devices, whether it be iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, all that good stuff. Now, David, I gave you enough time to chew up your giant Reese's cup. So uh, tell us, how was the young gravy and everything else you did? Well, I'm still eating it, but if you give me a second. There is no second. Sorry, this is a fast pace. I'm aware. Constantly moving, interviewing right, me, back and forth. Let me forth. stop the chair from uh, completely rocking back. We move rapidly. So, Speed I had went on a date night with my wife. Uh, we went to San Francisco and we saw uh, Wicked on Broadway, which was phenomenal. And then uh, we had a couple hour break and then we saw Young Gravy's concert where we got to see Carter Vale. Um, I don't know if you know him. I know he started popping up on my like YouTube shorts and TikToks doing like funny songs and uh the song the song that pops with me how how many how long have we been reporting not long okay he has a specific song saying aliens ain't but i'm not going to finish it because we're not within the first like out of the first few minutes before we would get a strike for swearing we don't get strikes for swearing because i swore right in the first like two minutes it's aliens ain't shit and it's a hilarious song i love it um so that was the only song that i knew going into this concert we knew he was the opener but i didn't actually bother to listen to the rest of the music and i really should have because phenomenal i absolutely loved uh seeing him young gravy came out and i didn't have high expectations it was it, i mean it met my expectations but, well, if they were high, then obviously they met them. But let's, it was, it wasn't 
it didn't like exceed my expectations much. Uh, like I went expecting a few songs I would know, and I was expecting him to sing a little bit. Um, dude was clearly on something, and just seemed out of it for majority of the concert. So and like relied heavily on his DJ, which is DJ really cool dude. Um, at some at one point they threw they passed out water bottles to everybody because we were in the the front, and he was like, "All right, yeah, drink everything but the bo- small little bit on the bottom." He says, "Leave about that much," which for everybody watching or listening is about an inch. He was asked for about an inch of water left. And then it was at a certain point in a song, he said, when I hit to this point, he says, I'll spray you guys with the water, and then you guys have to aim kind of backwards and spray the water behind you, but like just fling the water back, but don't throw the bottle. So he did that, and then um, he threw Fruit Loops at us. Uh, like he had the box, and he would just like throw in handfuls. And then at one point, uh, somebody came out on stage because they were doing it like a little campfire scene. And so while the song was going, they had somebody come up and they were making pancakes. And then they were just throwing pancakes into the audience. Um, one of the pancakes was given to Young Gravy and he signed it and he threw that into the crowd. Um, I ended up catching a pancake, which my immediate question is, well, what am I supposed to do with this? I'm not going to eat it. You want to know why I wasn't going to eat it? Because my hand wasn't the only hand to touch it. I had missed it, and it was the people behind me were swatting, trying to catch it, and it flung back towards me and landed literally, like, because I had my arm kind of across my my chest to, like, hold on to Katie, and it just landed on my arm, and I was like, I I guess I got that pancake now, but what am I supposed to do with the pancake? I feel like that is such a weird weird thing to be thrown at at a concert now my expectations is when i go to see the death of slim shady concert i better get spaghetti thrown at me and just giant ladle full of just spaghetti just flung into the audience that'd be cool uh make sure you bring diapers for uh eminem oh yeah because uh it was he's a grandfather now yeah yeah with the temporary music video, it was announced that he's going to be a granddad. Good for him. I know, right? Oh my god! And, and Did good, you see good for the... uh... Haley? Yeah, absolutely. Did I see what the temporary music video? No, I did not watch the the music oh, video. Dude. I just saw, I just saw a clip of Haley coming out with the jersey. It was uh the Detroit Lions that actually posted it. And he came out with the jersey, and they're like, that's an epic uh, pregnancy announcement. And I was like, hey, good, well, yeah, good for him. Like, Eminem is very closely tied to the Detroit Lions. Oh, well, yeah. I know. So much so, I believe he was actually out there during the draft picks and went on stage with the, like, coach, if I'm not mistaken. Or he went, no out, he went out and was doing the announcements for the Detroit Lions or something. I remember I seeing no a clip. Okay, so no idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, as as we get to get back on topic and stop this segue here, uh, David's obviously been doing stuff as he's just been explaining and everything else. I don't want to go into too much detail about what recently happened to you. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. a little that was that's a bit of a scare. That was a bit of a scare. Um, I'll give you guys the the very 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 brief rundown. Uh, at the beginning of the week, we thought our cats potentially might have eaten some ibuprofen, which ibuprofen is extremely toxic to the cats. Um, it's been about three, four days since then, and uh, we officially got a word that the cats are okay. Uh, they did not have ibuprofen, and it only cost us like $1,300. So if you guys want to donate some money to me, to try and get me out of debt for trying to save my cast lives. Uh, there's a GoFundMe in the comments. I know it says to buy me a computer. I already own a computer due to some other I, funding that ended up I happening. I so totally forgot that the GoFundMe is still on the like, GoFundMe is still The GoFundMe is still up. I don't think anybody's actually donated to it. 
Um, I haven't bothered to actually look at it because uh, my wife was kind enough to buy me a computer that has the power, and I just have not had a chance to really look at it. Um, but if you feel so inclined, uh, in the comments should be my GoFundMe, and it says, buy me a computer, or help buy me a computer. Uh, that money will just benefit me of paying back my immense debt to save my cat's lives. Um, what else is there? I, I continue to do a lot of stuff. Since you've seen me, I've gone to, I went to two 21 Pilots concerts. Uh, a jelly Roll concert. Yeah, I went to a Jelly Roll concert. That one was unexpected. Um, oh, goodness. Uh, I went axe throwing, which was, I've never done that before. That was, that was a cool experience. Um, what else have I done? Oh, I played a Magic the Gathering tournament and won first place. Nice. Yeah. I still uh, have no idea how to play, but I have so many cards. It's hey, not even if you, funny. If you don't want those cards, I'll gladly take them. They may or may not be worth money right now, but... I have really old Magic cards. Like, it, it they was... They could be uh, worth something. It was given to me out of a revenge thing, and the person was collecting for, like, most of their life. Yeah. I'll gladly take him off your hands. <laughs> uh, so uh, Yeah, so what's going on in your life? What's going on in me life? Uh, just yeah. a lot of work. Um, I've been recently making trips up to Northern California, up to Eureka, to the coast to visit. You're already in Northern California, dumbass. <laughs> up in higher north, I was saying where Eureka is. I know I'm already in Northern California, but I've been I would going say up that, even higher. I would say that it's like mostly west, like only west. It's it's uh... anyway from from my pos. Well, I guess from my position, it's. It would be more west than north, but it's still going up. If you're if you're thinking about it in a crude way of like straight up would be north, south, east, west. Because let's say my nose is Red Bluff, I would be going towards the R in Rune. Or towards the N in Erdias, my good fellas, to be more precise to your looking. Yes. Because I'm heading more west than anything. But yeah, I've been uh, having a lot of fun, doing a lot of work. Uh, working has taken up a lot of my free time. But that's all good. Yeah, it's fun work. It's good work. It's always mm. good to be preoccupied. I gotta, gotta make money somehow. You know, all the... uh. Feet finder picks aren't doing me well. If you guys so would like, like to donate money to try <laughs> just... and save Rune's life, uh, there's a GoFundMe in the comments. I was about to say, just like David's attempts at the GoFundMe page, you could go and support me on Feet Finder. <laughs> Where for the you. low subscription price of $1.99, you can see these beautiful things right here. Don't be giving it away for free. I'm going to blur it. I'm going to blur it, too, in the edit version of this. Oh, God, he's showing his feet. I'm going to have some random creepy dude at a crystal motel gooning to it. But, yeah, I've been, me, Chris, and me, It's Your Boy, and Retro have all been very busy with work. Uh, it, X and Assassin, since we have the Nerdy Guys, my good fellas thing, in the background we're also going to touch base on this in drinking corner but everybody's just been busy and it's been hard to sit out time for either you or john to do an r and r and it's been just a pain in the ass to get anybody together to do the drinking corner but i'm hoping to work yes. on it because again like i shell money out each month to do these podcasts and just like the last kind of two seasons of the drinking corner and then this first season of R and R, we've just not done a lot to kind of yeah. justify the money to be spent. Even if the quality of the podcasts aren't 
like top notch and where I want it to be. I at least want to do something so that way it's worth the price. Right. Which is why we get some of these ones where in which we're just talking, bullshitting for the hour that we do this on. As we discuss topics that are interest are are of an interest to us and passionate about. Which uh, I guess speaking about on where we've been and why it's taken so long in between episodes, which I promise to the people listening that actively like to listen to this, like Glenn and everybody else, I am striving to upload every Wednesday. Um, There's going to be a little special occasion for this episode as this episode will release sooner because in literally 15 minutes, it will be October 4th, which is my birthday. And this is the special birthday episode. Imagine confetti. Mm-hmm. Imagine a bunch of confetti raining down for those of whom were watching on the vidcast. David's gonna do a complete spin around. It's 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 gonna be great. I have no idea I'll how take I'll the, edit that. I in. will take the head. I will take the headphones off, and then I will physically spin in my chair with, for you. Okay. Just so that way I'm not being wrapped up in the cable. I was gonna mean your screen is literally just gonna go. Whoo- my screen is just going to go whoop, like. Sorry, are you seeing if you could do that <laughs> in, the, in the settings menu? Ah, it's been beautiful. There we go. Let me set it like this. Oh, I don't mean to yawn. It's been a long day. Indeed it is. Oh, God. He's just messing with the border images. It's great. But yes, it's my birthday. I am now officially 29 years old. It's it's going to be beautiful. I can see the Grim Reaper standing on the street corner next to a sign that says 30. My back's hurting. My knees are giving out. For those and... of you who have already reached 30 or above, uh, hi. Hi. We're fast approaching. We're almost I'm there. At, I'm at 28 right now. It's beautiful. Me and you are the same age oh, for 14 God. more minutes. It's so great. My youth. But yeah. Um, let's Let's jump into my first topic, I guess. Birthday boy gets to pick the topic first. Let's oh, talk shit. about some upcoming games because this is... For people who are familiar with my YouTube channel, in October, I usually do a thing called Spooktober, where I just mainly focus on horror games, which, yeah. to let you guys know, right now, for my personal channel, we got Alan Wake 2 running. Uh, Control, which isn't really a horror game. It's more psychological horror, but it's not scary whatsoever. But I am running that simultaneously with Alan Wake 2, which is more psychological horror. Uh, we're working on Dead Space 2, which is actually scary, but fun. I am loving Dead Space 2, by the way. I don't I know. I have never played it. I don't know what it was about the first one where it was like I liked it, but I was very hesitant to play it. With 2, I just have not been able to put it down, and I am like addicted to it. On the group channel, we got Outlast Trials that we're still running through. We're about to do our second story run through on a harder difficulty to unlock more of the lore and do some of the seasonal Halloween events. We got um, Telltale's The Walking Dead, which is a narrative story game that I am personally running through on the group channel. There will be the final episode of State of Decay 2 Judgment or Juggernaut Edition that's going to be uploading on into there. Um, I was planning to do Bioshock 1 if I have the time for my personal channel. I was going to live stream it, but I found out something interesting about Bioshock the other day. You can't live stream it to Twitch. The game, will, the game will absolutely not let you live stream it. And it is something to do with the like terms and conditions or something. It is just not able to be streamed on Twitch. I don't know if it could be streamed at all, but yeah. And then there was some other horror games, but I can't. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's your boy Chris and I are going to be running through the quarry for the group channel at some point this month. And we might be starting on the Dark Pictures anthology as well for the group channel. 
whenever we could gotcha. sit down and spend time together whenever we get gifted with a similar day off. But uh, to talk about some stuff coming up in four days from when this comes out, guess what comes out? And I'm so excited for it. Until Dawn. Until Dawn came out today. Which I'm also, ex- oh, I'm also excited for the Until Dawn remake. I do plan to get it at some point. I was really fingers crossed hoping it would be in the PlayStation Essentials, but it's not. But um, Until Dawn, I'm excited for. But Silent Hill 2 releases on the 8th. And I oh, am the 8th. Yes, yes, very yes. excited for that. Like, that is a game I've been actively, like, for the last year when they first showed the first teaser trailer of James, like, walking in the fog. I was like, yes. And unlike most of the people that I've heard criticize Silent Hill 2 for changing character models and stuff like that, like, I really like the fact that they modernized it a little bit more. Sure. And, like, for instance, the uh, the female character that follows you around, I'm facing her name right now which is really bad because she's like a main character but they didn't make her look like a tramp in this one because in the original silent hill 2 i'll show images in the video version of this but in the original silent hill 2 she was meant to represent james sutherland's like lust so she looked skimpy to put it nicely but in this one, she's more modest and everything, and it does seem to be a more psychological tool on James. Because I, I don't know how into Silent Hill you are, if you know the lore really well or not. I've never played it. So, to give a quick abridged version, Silent Hill, the town, when the bell tolls and it flips to the other side, the other side is a representation of your internal like sins. So, for instance, the mascot of the game, Pyramid Head, is a representation of James's self-torment. Okay. And then it's like, the reason why the nurses are all skimpy is because he had an affair while his wife was dying with the nurse. So the nurses represent that lust and the affair. The version of his wife that he sees alive in Silent Hill in the original game was dressed skimpily and everything and was meant to stop him from finding out the revelation and getting over the trauma and the guilt of his wife's death Mm -hmm. because his guilt is what manifested silent hill gotcha well not silent hill because silent hill was the actual town that was right right. i'm 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 understanding the 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 flip version i got you the town itself had a cult and when the town exploded, you can you can, you can spare me. Yeah, I just love you can tell life. me when we're not recording. Come on, let's make this podcast a Silent Hill podcast. <laughs> Break down the entire lore as I understand it. But no, I'm I'm excited for Silent Hill too. I've been very excited for it. I was going to pre-order it in this check, but I just got a notification of how big my check's gonna be, and it is two hundred dollars shorter than what it normally is so it's like i gotta kind of make some responsible choices and i'm gonna push it on to somebody else as a birthday gift i eat my mom <laughs> i was like come on mom buy it for me come on come on you like horror yeah, games. i i think i i lucked out and i uh i got the easiest gift so honestly you got what will probably be one of the more appreciated gifts because i've been really wanting psn and guilty pleasure reason, WWE is uh, the game of the month. And I've been really wanting to get that one because I wanted to see how the character customization is, which going to be very weird. The only reason why I play WWE games is for character creation. I love the character creation. It has one I of mean, the best character creations I've not, ever experienced. Not, not to uh, take a stab at WWE, but... It's not like you're playing it for the story. Uh, I would say in terms of most fighting games, the story mode for them, like my GM or even your character's personal story, is usually always interesting. They do offer more than I will say UFC. Sure. 
I love UFC. I've been playing the shit out of UFC 5 with It's Your Boy. I'll always be a fan of WWE, though. I grew up with it. I'm going to be biased on it, no matter which outlook I take on it. But I'm happy to get PSN for that. And I did shell out, and I did get the PSN Essentials and just paid for one month because I was already planning to renew my membership. So it just kind of works that way. So PSN Essential, or not Essential, Premium. I got Premium. Gotcha, okay. And so $20 a month is my first paycheck. It's going to pull the PSN Premium. Second half of the month of my second check, it pulls Xbox Game Pass, which I think is relatively fair. $20 yeah. per check for my gaming mm -hmm. needs, $40 a month. That's good. And All right. I get to finally do Last of Us Part 1 and Ghost of Tsushima when I'm so, done with Death Stranding. Let's, let's get into some more controversial topics. Ooh. Yes, I know. I've been dying to have this conversation with you, but me and you have not had a chance to actually sit and talk. No. So... PlayStation had their state of play, right? Yes. And as well as they had revealed, since me and you had did the, the last one, uh, they had revealed the PlayStation 5 Pro. Okay, yeah, which, Bob, this is going to be very controversial. So originally, when I was seeing the, the announcement for PlayStation 5 Pro, I was like, all right, cool. You know, yeah, they're, it sounds like it's, it's going to be like an actual like upgrade to the PlayStation 5 and i was i was really kind of like looking into that and then and then everything started to, to hit it's a minute detail that may or may not be noticeable in some games it's only going to benefit a few games um it does not come with a vertical stand nor does it come with a disk drive the disk drive is an additional i think it was like 50 60 bucks that you have to buy separately. I'm like, all right, you know what? And then, oh, and the console is seven hundred dollars. Sorry, wasn't meaning to bury that lead. Um, so at that point, I apologized to the person I was going to give my PlayStation Five to. I was like, listen, I'm not getting the PS Five Pro, so uh, I'm not going to be getting rid of my PlayStation Five, which they they understood. And then there was the PlayStation State of Play. Did you have you had a chance to watch the PlayStation State of Play? PlayStation I State did. Play. The only thing I've seen recently from PlayStation was the reveal of the PS5 Pro and the reveal of the PlayStation 30th anniversary. Which so super excited to to weigh in on the PS5 Pro and stuff. Didn't like the PS5 Pro when it first got announced. Like, definitely was not interested in it. Unfortunately, I am one of those people that like to collect physical copies of games and like to have a disk drive. So that was immediately kind of a no-go for me. I didn't like the right. fact that a disk drive is sold separately. The vertical stand is sold separately. And um, what else was it? I just, I did, I wasn't into it. And then um, the PlayStation 30th anniversary did catch my attention because I like the PlayStation 1 aesthetic and how it just looks overall. Right. But I don't like the limited um, quantity of it. I don't want to compete right. with the 12,000 other people who want to get it because I am not rich. I do not have money on hand to just drop for that PlayStation. And yeah. It should right. just go to so, somebody who's more of a fan and has the funds to drop it immediately. That, that opinion is not that controversial. A lot of people have that opinion, which is why after it was available for pre-order, pre-orders are still available for the console because so many people are not buying it. I heard I'm, that it's going to go to a raffle if it like oversells or that it was supposed to go to a raffle where instead of first come first serve, it was going to take them all and then raffle the entries and it would be randomized based off of it. And I was like, I would absolutely hate that. I would rather, if I want to go pre-order, it would be like out of stock. Cause then at right. least, at least at that point, I am not getting my hopes up. 
So my controversial point of view, I love Xbox. I, I love playing on my Xbox. Same. Um, and I love the Game Pass. But lately, if I'm looking for quality games, like exclusive games, I'm playing my PlayStation. I just went through and I uh, re-beat Ghost of Tsushima on the P- PS5 because I lost my PS4 save. Um, I am playing Helldivers 2 on my PS5 because it's easier and I don't want to have to rebuy it for PC. Feel it. Uh, Days Gone, which I don't know if I want to play anymore based off of the is the director's Ah, uh, you're what, talking about I, the like tweets? His, yeah. I At this point, I'm like, I don't know if I want to continue to support this game. So, granted, the I, director, I didn't buy it. So. The director is no longer part of the studio. The sure. director was fired from the studio that made the game because of how he treated the employees and how he treated the fans after the... It wasn't negative reception of Days Gone, but it was just the game came out during a time where so many other games came out and it just didn't sell. People waited for it to go on sale, which apparently to Sony stockholders just didn't garnish enough money to put it simply. Yeah, and that's that's understandable. And the director came out and blamed the fans. I apologize for and always, was like if, to lean forward, guys. And he legitimately was like, if you guys wanted a sequel, then you guys shouldn't have waited for it to go on sale. You should have bought it at full price and supported the game like you should. Which, right. yes and no, I feel that. I get that. But at the same time, like, we're in a day and age... Oh, gosh, darn it, cat. We're in a day and age where... Like the base game of a game is getting up to eighty dollars. Oh, absolutely, I don't have the fucking money to drop eighty dollars on a new game every time one comes out. Because I tell you what, if I was able to get new games as soon as they came out, I would have Until Dawn. I would have Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. I would have Silent Hill already in the bag. Metal Gear in the bag. I would have everything I've wanted to play. And a lot of these instances, I'm going to have to wait for them to go on sale. I mean, shit, I've been waiting for the WWE game to go on sale, and it was 30 bucks, and I still didn't buy it. Right. Which, I, I know, I think the last um, Drinking Corner we did was about, uh, I, I talked about pre-orders. the fact that I have the pre-orders. Uh, for transparency's sake, all my pre-orders are pre-orders that i'm like literally paying little bits towards so it wasn't like oh yeah here's a couple hundred dollars it was hey here's 50 bucks from this paycheck okay here's this other 50 bucks from this other paycheck okay this here's uh 70 bucks because i can splurge a little bit which now i i did have assassin's creed pay it off and i'm a little bit bummed that it's delayed but also, since it's been delayed, I've been see- like seeing more of the stuff about it. And I'm like on the fence on whether or not I want to keep my pre-order. I'll but, uh, say... but we'll, we'll get we'll get we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, to finish up this other topic or continue to talk about it, because I did mention the state of play. Um, the game that I'm most excited about from that state of play. There's there's a couple. Is the ghost of uh Yot- Yote? Yotai? Yeah. Y O T E I. I'm still working on the pronunciation. But Katie, my wife, was also super excited for it. Which that I wasn't expecting. Well, I mean, Ghost of Tsushima, I haven't That's had a-, a chance to play it yet, but I've never heard a single bad thing about that game. I, <laughs> uh, Katie continues to anytime that the mask because we have the mask on on a shelf over here, which I, I think I had. In the, um, anytime somebody ends up seeing that picture, they always comment, "How in the hell did you manage to get the mask?" Because it is incredibly hard to get the mask, and it makes me feel kind of bad that. 
I I got the collector's edition for this game, which as soon as goes to you 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 say, as soon as it goes to pre-order and has a collector's edition, like I'm I'm going to get the the collector's edition. I have permission from my wife because I know that Sucker Punch is not going to put out like a mid-tier game. Like they're going to put out quality content. Oh yeah. Sucker Punch, I love I really wish Sucker Punch wasn't PlayStation exclusive. Granted they're not because uh, Sunset Overdrive was made by Sucker Punch, which was also a really fun very I, th- I thoroughly enjoyed it. Game. But also I feel and I'm I'm hoping that Sony's treating them right, but I feel like Sucker Punch is a quality Sony like studio. I don't know if Sucker Punch is actually owned by Sony or if they just have either. this exclusivity. But like the the Ghost series, as I said, I'm going to just call it now since there's going to be two games. It is everything that we wanted from Assassin's Creed. I do think the proper terminology, because it just like ADHD brain popped in my head, it would be considered an anthology. Because it doesn't what? follow the same character, but it is within the same story element. You're, it's you're the same universe. I'm, I'm... Yeah, so I believe it it's would be six, considered it, like six hundred years, or it's a few hundred years afterwards. Is my what my understanding. Um, but it's quality, and so now, when I'm thinking about, oh yeah, I got this game coming out. My immediate thought is, you know it probably looked better on my PlayStation than my Xbox. That's the controversial thing, is I'm leaning more towards my PlayStation now than my Xbox, even though I pay for Game Pass, and I, I thoroughly enjoy Xbox. And I have a a good, decent library on Xbox. If I'm wanting good quality, like high quality, high visuals, like my immediate in, uh, instinct is, Yep, the PlayStation is a better uh selection for that. I will say, give me give me one second. Hey Matt, Matt, Matt. What's up? Happy birthday, oh, bro! Hey, happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! David happy birthday says all day long. David says happy birthday as well. Happy birthday, David. <laughs> Thanks. You're a few months late, but thank you. So I will say uh, from the PlayStation stay to play, one of the things that really caught my eye was the Horizon Zero Dawn. No, Horizon Zero Dawn, the, the remaster. Yes. And Lego Horizon as well. Yeah, because that one's not I, necessarily new, though. We knew that one was coming. I I like Horizon. I've played a little bit of the first game. I never got to beat it because, again, I don't give my PlayStation the proper love and attention it deserves. You guys can't see it because it's off camera, but I'm slowly stroking my PS5. But uh, with Horizon Zero Dawn remaster getting its remaster, same thing with Until Dawn because I never beat Until Dawn. David just sent me a photo. Yes, that that was the next thing I was going to talk about. I have the state of play pulled up on my phone to refresh me. I'm really me excited. Too. I I'm when it comes out, I will be making videos of Horizon Zero Dawn because it is one of PlayStation's flagship titles with Alloy. I was really, really banking because I've been hearing rumors of like a God of War trilogy remaster of the original games. Right. For Santa Monica Studio, which would be great because I love what they did with God of War, like Ragnarok and the remake. Which I still haven't even beat Ragnarok yet. I beat the original. I haven't beat Ragnarok yet. I haven't given it the love ever since I got the PS5. I'm like halfway I haven't played through. any other God of Wars, so. I would say you should definitely try the 2018 like reboot continuation of it. Right, yeah. I, I, I own the, it. I just never played it. The story between Kratos and Atreus is just, it's really beautiful and it sheds a whole new light on the God of War. From just right. his hack and slash brutal monster to a dude who's literally getting a second chance at fatherhood. But Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered and Lego Horizon very much pique my interest. Um, as David just shared the picture of it. I'm an Alan Wake fan. I'm excited for this second DLC, The Lake House. 
to continue on the story because which is uh directly connecting to control now because it's the department of control yes which they've also stated that control two is in the works and is remedy's second to next project because remedy right. i believe is working with rockstar again to bring out the max Payne remake we'll see because Max Payne also takes place in the Alan Wake universe. Max Payne is the books that Alan Wake writes with Alex Casey. Gotcha. But my my squinting universe. was not towards what you were saying. It was towards my screen oh. flashing lights at me. Same thing with uh, Quantum Break. Quantum Break. I knew, I knew Quantum Break was in the Alan Wake universe. Yes. Because it's brought up in the, uh, the Chapter 1 DLC. Because Sean Ashmore is like, hey, I remember the the director from Control. She's the girl that helped me and blah, blah, blah. That and the whole point of Sean Ashmore's section of the DLC is they're making Quantum Break in the game. Right. Which is funny. And then Sam so, Lake is Max Payne. The other thing that I sent you. The other thing from the state of play that I am actually really excited about, and I feel a little guilty that I'm excited about it, is, it is I don't know. Ah, it comes out Halloween, and I'm excited. What does Dragon Age Veilguard? Oh, the no, next... I don't. I don't particularly care. It's waited ten years for this game, bro. It better just yeah. fucking blow my mind. Uh, Hitman World of Assassination for the PSVR 2. I don't have the PSVR 2 yet, but I do I though. Am... So <laughs> I apologize. That was a very crude uh, gesture, everybody. I'm very sorry. It was not directed towards you, it was very much directed towards uh, Mr. Rune. Goodness. I, I, whenever I, I get will the say, funds to get the VR 2, I do want to get Hitman because I. As a fan of Hitman, I would love nothing more to imitate another bald, beautiful man killing people in VR. Well, I was I was excited because originally it popped up that it was available for, for the PSVR. It was like Hitman, the first Hitman or Hitman 2. But I can't play the PlayStation VR games. It has to be PSVR 2 because I don't I thought... have the original VR. Oh, you don't have the original VR. I don't have the original VR. See, I could do Hitman 2 VR. But I want to do the world of assassination. I want access to everything. The only thing right. I don't really like about it is I wish IOI had an interactive kind of transfer thing, kind of like Dead by Daylight or Fortnite, where you could have the same account on different consoles and have cross progression. That's the name of right. it, cross progression. Because I don't want to start over from rank one again and have nothing. Right. And then again, if I'm playing it in VR, it's going to have more of a personal connection and I'm going to probably be way more in tune to re-earning everything in VR. Because mm -hmm. God knows how much time I would be spending in that game. Especially with some say... of the beautiful ass locations like Sapienza oh, absolutely, absolutely. or China and stuff like that. There, there was a game that I was really hoping they were going to talk about in State of Play. And that's Death Stranding 2. I they did put really... out a new trailer. Uh, it they? was at the Tokyo uh, Tokyo Game Show oh, that just I... aired. Uh, they showed a new trailer for it with Ellie Fanning and uh, this new puppet character that sings and everything. They introduced Creepy. two. They introduced two new characters. One of which is having a actual birth baby. Not one of the like BB still mother ba babies. Gotcha. Which kind of scares Regardless. me because like my mind goes the worst case scenario. If the baby is born stillborn, does that mean the baby's gonna have a void out? Yes. If if they end up with the if one of them gets to it, then yeah, I think so. Uh huh. that is a that is also a collector's edition that I'm really wanting to get. Now that one I don't necessarily have permission for my wife for. 
See, I but, have the collector's edition of the first game. So I have the little bridge baby like lamp. I was an idiot and gave it to my mom. Mom, if you're watching this, fuck you. Um, I want it back and I want to steal it. But it also came in a briefcase. And it came with like caution tape. I used to have the little Luden like keychain figure. But it got caught on something and ripped, snapped. And now I no longer have it. But yeah. I saw the sunglasses, like the Luden mask sunglasses that I would, Sam I would wears. Just, I was just looking at the stuff that they just uh, announced regarding those that. glasses are three hundred dollars, like three hundred and fifty. Yeah, on every Kijimo. single one on their website right now is five hundred bucks for the collector's edition or the glasses. The glasses, the collector's edition is not available yet because we don't even have a release date. But that's what I've been. I'm. I want them to take their time. I want them to make sure it's a quality game, which I'm is... going to say this with pure biasism. It's a Kojima game that does not involve Konami. It is going to come out when Kojima no, knows it's polished and done because he does right. not like. And I, and, I have, and I appreciate and respect the hell out of that. I just personally would like to get my hands on the game because I want to experience it, but also, you know, I want it to be as polished as they can make it. So, you know, I'm not, I'm frustrated that it's not out yet, but also I'm okay with that. You're anticipating. Yes. I mean, if you're really anticipating, go to Barnes and Noble. They released Death Stranding novels. It's just there's get been so many games that, that have come out that have came out that you get the game and you're like, it's broken mess. Or DLCs will drop and you're like, I paid 30 bucks for this. Are you uh, are you referencing something that you told me not to do? And I was like, I got to do it. I'm so excited. No, no, no. I'm talking about oh. a DLC that dropped just a couple days ago. What DLC dropped a couple days ago? Starfields. Oh, snap. I didn't even realize Starfield. God, I still got to beat Starfield. I still got to live stream it. Yeah. I, I was getting uh, really into the deal, it. The DLC came out. Now, granted, it we it adds a new planet. It adds a bunch of stories it, or missions on this planet. It doesn't add a bunch more of things, though. Like, I thought no... it dove into one of the cults that were from the game. It does. Yeah, it does. In like but story lore. It there there's story lore, but it it's just it's another like just knife in the back for me. It's like this could have been so much better, but there's just something <laughs> that is just not connecting. So we both got this treatment then. Because <laughs> why you... I'm taking it you just paid for Starfield's DLC and you're not fully impressed, correct? That is the impression I didn't pay, I'm no, getting? I I I had purchased the season pass uh when the game came out. So I <laughs> I didn't just pay for it. I've owned it for a while. So for me. My hot take on that is I just paid 50 fucking dollars for the Chaos Reigns DLC pack for Mortal Kombat 1 because right. me wanting to be on top of the Mortal Kombat train as I have been since the game came out was like, okay, new DLC. I'm excited. I want to see where the story is going to go. I paid $120 for the base game, which you would think $120 should come with a season pass. To get all the combat packs. It didn't. I was like okay. Paid $50. For this combat pass. For a story expansion. And the DLC characters. The DLC was great. I will give it that. It was really short. I beat it within two hours. It gave right. us three characters. Which I didn't think I would enjoy. Cyrax and Sector as much as I do. I really like Sector's play fight. I knew I would fall in love with Noob Cybot the second I got to play with as him, and I did. 
I love how Noob plays in this game a lot better than he has in previous games. But the story just did not hit for me because the way the main game ended with Havoc walking down the pyramid and threatening chaos to Liu Kang's new era and then coming in and stealing Geras, literally the events of the game take place within a couple of hours. Like, at most a day in game. Right. They handled the chaos like domain within a day of time. They handled that faster than they did General Shao and Shang Tsung's takeover. It they they hyped Havoc to be such a bad guy. He had all the Komidogus and everything was meant to be this huge powerful godlike figure and he doesn't right. even get defeated by fucking god Liu Kang. He gets beaten by simple ordinary fucking noob Cybot. And his expl his explanation is he's been in my head. I know his fighting techniques. I know all of his moves. Motherfucker is still a god carrying ancient elder god artifacts that is amplifying his power. Motherfucker is ripping off his own limbs, making clones of himself. And he gets beaten by an everyday ordinary fighter. By a ninja. Yeah. He happens absolutely. to have cloning abilities. And you want to know what was even the icing on the cake of that ending? Guess. Guess how fucking Noob Cybot kills Havoc. Gives him a piece of cake and he chokes on it. By ripping off the fucking limbs of his body that was producing other fucking clones. It was a well-stated fact that when Havoc loses a part of his body, it grows into another Havoc. And Bihan defeats Havoc by ripping off his arms and his legs repeatedly. <laughs> and then the game... I feel, like, I, I feel like we, we went on a little tangent there. I had a rant. <laughs> oh, oh, and don't get me wrong, the $50 gives you the story expansion, but for free, without paying for the expansion, you got the new animalities, you got the new brutalities, you got the Towers of Time, regardless, so the literal only thing you were paying for was two hours worth of story DLC, Sector, Cyrax, Bihan, and then you get Ghostface next month, the T-1000, and Conan the Barbarian. You get three characters that weren't promised from the story DLC. Now, regardless of the fact, they are going to release a combat pack three because they usually do three combat packs per game. Mm -hmm. I am slightly afraid. Granted, NetherRealm Studios throughout the release of Mortal Kombat 1 has kind of learned from fan suggestion on certain things, like they lowered the price of cosmetics in the store when fans complained that it was too much. They discounted sure. all the people and even refunded with in-game currency the people who paid for the holiday fatalities because people believed we shouldn't have had to pay real life money for different fatalities. So they kind of learned from stuff. So I'm really hoping that they learn to not kind of make the DLC the cost of a full game. Granted, the effort and the quality of that DLC with the fidelity, the graphics, there's like a scene where one of the characters is holding back these walls that's closing in on them, and it looked like I was watching a live action movie. You could see like the sweat starting to drip out of the dude's face, like real live sweat just dripping down, and it just looked phenomenal for a fucking fighting game. But $50 is steep, and I'm really afraid that even if they do Combat Pack 3, I hope they do another DLC story to kind of set up Mortal Kombat 2 because they reference a lot of things that are going on that's on a more grand scale other than Havoc just jumping in and getting his ass whipped in a day's time. Right. So as much as I, like, I know for a fact if they release it and it's another 50 bucks, I know... My dumbass will pay another 50 bucks to get drip fed some story 
and whatever bonus characters they're going to release. Because I'll be like, I got to play it. I just, I had buyer's remorse because I know I was telling you, like, the choices of games were between the Mortal Kombat 1 DLC, Dead Rising Deluxe Edition, and I think it was WWE that was on sale for $30. And you're telling me just don't get any of them. And I was like, ah, oh, but I got the money right now. Save I really your money. Know. Yeah. As much as I'm happy to have played the DLC story and get it recorded and have it put out by now, I just, I semi-regretted it. I should have just waited. Granted, even this paycheck, yeah. I wouldn't have had it, and then I would have been kicking myself in the ass. God damn, cat. Hi. Can you not? So, please? Oh my god, I'm being bombarded by both cats now. So, uh, Pulling everything back in a little bit. Ghost Yokai, we're supposed to get Yo <laughs> Yokai. Supposed to get next year, right? Right. And the Ghost Anthology, Ghost of Tsushima, Ghost of Yotai, it is literally the setting and somewhat the style of games that the Assassin's Creed fans have been asking for. We've been wanting to go or they've been wanting to go to feudal Japan, right? Yeah, I've been and we wanting got that since, like, Black Flag. Um, and now we're getting Ghost of Yotai. 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 So, why is it that the game that Ubisoft makes, the Assassin's Creed, that is in that setting, right? Why are they pushing it to try and compete for Game of the Year with Go see you, you'll tie. Well, because between the two, I'm going to be honest, without even playing either of them, I'm expecting uh, Sucker Punch's game to be leagues above Ubisoft's. And I'm the games see. aren't even out yet. It's just my, sorry, and I'll let you, I'll let you finish in just a second. It's just the Ubisoft games that have been coming out and the same thing with Bethesda as of late, which I feel bad about saying because I love Bethesda. I love Fallout games. I love Star. Well, I, I like Starfield. I love Starfield, even though I haven't beaten it yet. I, I, through my time cycle, I, every I, time I, I jump into it, I I'm fully invested. Well, I I have I've had a bad taste in my mouth with Starfield for a little bit there because I didn't have any mods installed and I didn't have any audio. And Why could not figure out how to solve break it. On you. Everything. Well, just I fig I figured out what had happened. So what the the short version is I did install a mod and then changed my mind and had uninstalled it, which was supposed to have fixed the issue that it had caused, but apparently it didn't fix it. So I had to reinstall it, load up the game, and then uh I had to do a couple funky things to get to work. Anyway. Ubisoft, uh, upon uh, delaying their game, which I did have this collected edition for, um, they're doing away with the season pass, which is great. I love the fact that they are changing up their model. They finally listened. And they're like, hey, we got to do better. We can't just do the 70, 90, and 120 editions. So they're they're doing away with the season pass and they're giving everybody the first DLC for free. Right. Right. Even still, I don't expect I don't I, I'm gonna keep my expectations low because I'm not expecting quality. Cause I just don't want to be disappointed. Now I I love the Assassin's Creed series. I really do. I love Watch Dogs. I I had pre-ordered Assassin's Creed Mirage, canceled the collector's edition. I did eventually pick up Mirage. I played, I think, two hours, three hours. I have not touched it again. It's just been sitting on my console. It, just, it never lie. really drew me in. I'm not going to lie. It is the exact same thing for me. The last Assassin's Creed game I've played 
like in terms of newest was Valhalla. I made it up to the point where you could do the raids, and then I haven't touched it since. The last Assassin's Creed game I was actually excited for would have been Odyssey because of the Spartan like overall theme, which I didn't get. I made it to like maybe act two of the game. The farthest I've made it in the new saga of Assassin's Creed games ever since they became more of like role playing games with the character build and stuff like that. I've made it maybe the furthest in Origins. But I have not beaten any of the new ones. The last Assassin's Creed game I've beaten all the way through was Unity. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, going through the series on this channel, I am on Chronicles, which I like the Chronicles series, but I'm at the point now where I just want to get through them because this... 2D side scroller is just kind of getting on my nerves with it, but I want to get it because I want to experience a part of the story I haven't yet gotten a chance to experience because I've never played the Chronicles games before. So it's just frustrating. But I haven't even picked up Mirage because I'm nowhere near it and I don't want to play it and spoil it for myself when I'm going through. Because when I go through to right. actually no, I get that. stream it, when I go through my live streams of the games, I want my reactions to be genuine. I want to be in awe and, and appreciate the story. Right. But I have genuinely started to dislike Assassin's Creed since they made it a RPG. Because my whole thing with why I didn't like Odyssey and I didn't like Valhalla was if you sneak up on somebody and you stab them with the hidden blade, I don't give a shit what level you are. That should be an instant kill. Mm -hmm. you sneak up on a guy and you stab him in the neck they're not gonna turn around and be like oh how dare thy enter a sword right. fight with me you know and it, it just it took me out of what made assassin's creed assassin's creed for me because i've been a fan since the og game no no of course One. i i completely agree and i was on that i was on that flagship of when we were hearing about the next Assassin's Creed before they announced Shadows, where I genuinely thought we were going to get a remake of the original Assassin's Creed. Because if you, I don't know if you've ever paid attention to you play, Assassin's Creed 1 is not part of the series. You play counts the first game in the series as Assassin's Creed 2. Hmm. So everybody, everybody has been wanting one to be a part of the confirmed because one one is part of the actual story because revelation right one apparent and you can't deny altair the original assassin sure but we've been wanting a modern take on assassin's creed one with altair's story with more modern controls and a little bit more and then they allow the you play and have the whole series be reflected through that so I was really excited for it. But then when they announced Shadows, I couldn't deny I was still excited for it. Which I think we're still getting another, not feudal Japan, but we're getting a China Assassin's Creed as well, which is, I think, mobile. Uh, Jade, which is Jade. Yeah, something like that. And then we're still getting Jade, Hex, and then the other one that I don't remember. Yeah. I, so... But I'm on the same boat with you that I think I if I had to choose between Ghost of Your Toy if I had to choose between Ghost or Assassin's Creed on which it's one Ghost. I'd want to play first, it would be Ghost. Nothing Ghost. And, against and, Ubisoft or Assassin's Creed, but I just feel like I would enjoy Ghost a little bit more. Not to say I'm not excited and a lot of the things they're bringing back because they're legit bringing back the stealth mechanic. Uh, the female plays like original Assassin's Creed, whereas uh, the male samurai is more of the brunt force meant to not be stealth character. Who I'll right. probably still play as stealth because me, I'm fucking sneaky sneak. I I will say the controversy behind Shadows, and we're we're just gonna dive into this, guys. I'm sorry. Um, the controversy behind it. I, I, how how uh, much of the controversy are you talking? Are you, are you talking about the black samurai? Yes, because that the is the only controversy that... I have heard. But there was legitimately a 
Black Samurai. No. So I swear it's, to... it's been it's been uh, it's a highly uh, discussed thing. He was only mentioned. OK, don't don't bother looking it up because I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on. He was only mentioned in like one or two things. And then a guy years ago, and I apologize, guys, if you're watching, you'll suddenly see my fan that's behind me appearing for whatever reason. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, I'm edit your fan he, to look like Slender Man. <laughs> uh, there's a guy who decided to write like this 400 page book about this guy saying that he was this black samurai who the one black samurai in all of like this time period. The guy arguably does not exist. Like the oh. Japanese historians argue the guy never existed. And the uh, the author has came out and said, I had to interpret interpret a lot of things. And Ubisoft, uh, they, they put him in there. Now, that being said, Assassin's Creed is not meant to be completely historically accurate. No. Yes, we're using uh, the time period. So, you know, we had the Renaissance. We had... Uh, Ancient, the first crusade we've we had, had the first crusade so like there's are historical things that are going on but the people themselves have never been you know actually like there this so, is the first time that it's a named person that there's argument of whether or not they existed but it's still not a historical thing but the controversy is uh that ubisoft is including him well it's Even not like the we Japanese have fan it. The Japanese that... historians of what with what I've been saying seeing um are angry about the inclusion of this character, this person who uh they feel is not accurately representing the time period. If and don't quote me on that. This is a video this is a discussion and videos that I've seen and it's been like a little over a week and a half to two weeks ago. And I've had a lot happen since then. This is my understanding as of right now. Go ahead, Tim. So to touch base on the historical fact of like Assassin's Creed, because again, as you mentioned, Assassin's Creed takes place in history. It uses real life historical events. Like for instance, to touch on the first Assassin's Creed took place during the first crusade. The Assassin's right. home base was in Masyaf. One of the very first ever assassin organized groups in real life did take place in Masyaf. So that's where they pull the historical fact. Was there ever an actual assassin named Altair al -Bahad? Nobody really knows, but it's pulling from a source. Just like in other media, it's like you could look at other versions of a black samurai we've had the animated show with samuel jackson being afro samurai which no historical accuracy there but it is in some sort of media and some sort of entertainment assassin's creed is meant to do what entertain its general populace it's right. not meant to teach us history because it would be teaching us improper history it is meant to entertain us while luring us in with historical fact making you believe on a premise that these could have been things that actually happened. Ezio Aratori da Firenze could have really known Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci could have been a person who assisted the assassins. Leonardo da Vinci and Machiavelli were very intelligent people. It could be a mm -hmm. believable fact that, you know, a secret society of people in Italy during the Renaissance area. It's never meant to be something that is taken with severe seriousness. Right. No, I got that. And as you already knew, I was Googling the first Black Samurai, as you can mm. see me looking down and look at. And Yasuke... A lot of things I'm seeing was Yasuke, the Black Samurai. Right. 
which it look there is a lot of like legitimate universities and everything that is talking about who was the real Yasuke, the story of Jap- Japan's black samurai. Yes, but they all are sourcing this book. African this Samurai, book. the true story of Yasuke, legendary black warrior in feudal Japan. Yes. And this book was majority of it was interpreted off of like two mentions of this dude. And this guy, he's since uh, Assassin's Creed Shadows has been announced, he has uh, deleted his social media and basically disappeared from the, the world. I say, especially with now, literature, now, was now before before we go on. Assassin's Creed Shadows is a video game meant to entertain, like you said. It's not meant to be historically accurate, and I I know the team has come out and already said this, so I don't care as much that they included the dude because the dude may or may not exist. It doesn't matter. It's the events of this game like we're talking about an ancient race of people have shown up and in the past and now they've left these breadcrumbs for us to find so we're talking about a device that can control people's minds we're talking about a device that can track people throughout the world if i remember assassin's creed black flags apple thing we're talking about an ancient computer that convinced the Norse people that the gods existed and that there was um, the, an afterlife. Which, spoiler, Valhalla. So, another thing I would like to point out about Assassin's Creed, if we're going to dive into controversy real quick, is the simple fact that, oh, cat. Sorry, my cat just ran and jumped up and bit me in the side. Um, It's a simple fact, what? So, to touch base on Shadows with a Black Samurai, I could get the historical accuracy of people who are actual, like, Japanese historians and everything. I could get the upset about it because Japan is very big with honor and tradition. So I could get the, the backlash towards that. I think for entertainment purposes, because, you know, there is Afro Samurai, which I looked up, was not initially taken well in Japan, but has since became something that's been loved in Japan. And that is, you know, also a Black Samurai that's being shown, which is historically inaccurate, I guess. But um, if you look at Odyssey and Valhalla, the canon characters for Odyssey and Valhalla would be the female counterparts. Sort of. Yes, for Odyssey, for Valhalla, it's female in real life. So you're supposed to choose the, let the animus choose, and it'll be female when you're in the, the real world. And then when you go to and Valhalla... Avor. It's... Well, you're Avor for both. Yeah. Well, in male Avor. You're, but you're the male one because then you're Javi, who is actually Odin. Either which way, um, Alexandra for Odyssey would not in that time period command as much as she did because sure. gender gender norms in that time period that I don't want to say there wasn't any but i don't think there would have been any female spartans especially when it came to the 300 which i well, believe let's was just fact check you right fact, now fact check it i'm not gonna say i am 100 percent accurate on this but i am just going off of what my general knowledge is and you know i am a man born of ignorance so i could be wrong spartan women enjoyed more freedoms and power than their counterparts throughout ancient Greece. They were independent-minded and often received a formal education, although separate from boys and not at boarding school. Not Spartan at boarding women schools. did not train for combat, but they were physically fit and participated in athletic competitions. So, 
either which way, Alexandra would not have been a warrior. But then again, the whole point of the story is she was trained to be an assassin. So narrative standpoint, it breaks the historical accuracy. The thing, the thing that they are people are arguing about is throughout all the the history that has that actually exists, the characters' names that they have pulled are not people who have ever actually been named as historical figures. Like the the characters that you play as, yes, Leonardo da Vinci, George Washington. Uh, there's many many others. This is the first time that they are saying you're playing as this character, who may or may not have existed before Shadows. Uh, it was just a small controversy, and now it's a major one. But controversial controversy also sells. Yes. Oh, but also uh, getting on to Ubisoft a little bit. Um, and I, I'm not the one who discovered this one. Uh, I, I do have to give credit to uh, some ordinary gamer, uh, which is another YouTube channel. Um, he pointed it out because he was talking about Ubisoft is, is dying, uh, quote unquote. Um, when they showcased. Yusuke, Yusuke, is his name right? Yusuke, yeah. Uh, when they showed him fighting, they ended up playing hip hop during the fight scene. But like it was gameplay, which means it wasn't playing beforehand. But as soon as he started fighting, they played stereotypically hip hop music. And it's like, hmm. Yeah, okay, you're trying to be like, oh yeah, it's a fight scene, so it's a you know, it's it's fun music, but also kind of racist semen. Down, yeah. so, you know. Get down. No. No. Oi. Get Oi. Knocks everything off the counter. That sounds about right. Anyway, we should but probably wrap this it up. It wouldn't soon, be so. the first time, though, that they tried to pull a real life person for their assassin because not saying Ezio Auditore was a real person, but the Auditores was a real family during the Renaissance time that were bankers, that were hung. Because I remember looking that up in high school when the game came out. Which I know you're fat checking me now on. And I'm like, was little high school Tim wrong? Oh God, the anxiety. No. Because I remember looking into it. So the the city that their a villa had actually that like they existed. Monte Giragoni. The city exists. Yes. But the villa itself doesn't. No, I'm not saying everything about the family was accurate. I'm just saying, like, I remember when the game first came out and I was curious and I was looking up the character of Ezio and I came across a thing that state that was talking about how the Auditores was a real family back then. That was so, a banker. Not nine years home. ago. Nine years ago, uh, and there, there's somebody trying to quote this. So this is a Reddit post, so take it with a grain of salt. Salt is being grained. They say, because uh, the person says, was Ezio Auditore from Assassin's Creed 2 based on a real person at all? They said, I tried researching and I met with my wits in. Surprisingly, the internet has let me down. And so they're asking on the Reddit page, Ask Historians. And the best comment says, they're my favorite two, but I can tell you there is categorically no evidence that anyone like Ezio or Auditore family existed at all. And the games get a lot of the 15th century finance wrong. Ezio's father's career in the bank is improbable, 
there's a whole bunch of improbable backstory involving about Altair's dis- descendants that have even involved Marco Polo, which makes for good trivia, but is historically inaccurate. And then it says, I don't have any sources, but I can't disprove that someone named Ezio Altair did exist. And again, grain of salt, I definitely probably cannot find the article I found back in like 20 whatever, the early 2010s. And, you know, I could be wrong. Life's just one giant mystery. But it's yes. not it, it, It's not the point of the Assassin's Creed games, again, to be historically accurate, which was right. the whole argument from the start. Yeah, it's it's a video game. Um, What was That's I complaining was about? Oh, yeah. Right? Between between the two, uh, I'm not expecting a lot out of Assassin's Creed. I'm, I'm happy that they. I'm excited. I'm. I'm happy that they delayed it, saying that they wanted to work on polishing and actually make the game good. So I'm hoping that when the game comes out, we are actually getting like a complete game and it feels stronger. Hearing that they want to work on the game more and polish it up more makes me more excited for the game. But it I'm, is not going to also... be something that I'm just going to drop the eighty dollars on and get immediately. Right. I'm also excited because originally they had delayed the game, but for the last few days, the collector's edition book study guide has still said that it was going to be arriving on my door in November. So I was like, what am I supposed to do with this book for the three months that it would be before the game comes out? And they did finally change it to uh, the 14th. Did I give that to you? No, I bought this off of the Ubisoft website like years ago. Back when they first started doing busts. I have one then somewhere. This was technically a anniversary gift from Nicole, if I'm not mistaken. Because she was the one. Anyway. Eh, I'm not going to get rid of it. I love Ezio. No. Uh, We should probably wrap this up because I think we just went over like the hour and a half mark. Oh damn, that is a long time. Um, yeah, I was not expecting to go on the rants and raves we did for this episode, but I love it because we always you'll find you'll hear us to... you'll hear us ranting and raving about something else in about a week. Maybe. Yep. So <laughs> I'm de- I'm still debating whether or not to make this an actual birthday episode and release it tomorrow because that means I need to cut, edit, do everything tonight, and I do still need to pack and get enjoy, ready for my weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Or if I should put this out or edit it throughout the weekend during the night off of my laptop, and then we do a drinking corner and release both on Wednesday. We'll do that. That sounds good. So I lied at the start. This is not coming out tomorrow. The time and dates that we've mentioned are not going to be accurate. You're going to get this on a Wednesday, a random fucking Wednesday at that. And you're going to enjoy it. You're going to love it. And you're going to share it with your friends, family, any, pat, rat, cat, dog, whoever you got to share videos with. Any resemblance of any person living or dead is purely coincidental. Any times or dates mentioned is purely coincidental and does not it, does not represent the views and religious standings of am I saying it? Do it's been so long since I've actually seen uh these get off the damn couch. You know what I'm Sorry, saying? Hold on. Yeah, guys, it is crazy. His cats are insane and they continue to attack at him. Uh for those of you who are listening, you're not seeing him uh making an absolute fool of himself <laughs> yelling at absolutely nothing. Oh hey! I wasn't, I wasn't even actually yelling. I was just lip syncing. I'm gonna go throw a box of condoms at the cat. Get the fuck off the counter! Get down! How did you guys get banned off of YouTube? Well, Tim threw a box, threw of, a box of condoms <laughs> at a cat. At a cat. To get him off the kitchen. Oh, yep. There, nope. There's going cups and cans. All right, guys. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure to be ranting and raving and not talking about anything specific. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Uh, If you so enjoyed it, please share it with every cat, dog, pet rock, family member, friend, 
You did that so backwards, but I love it because you did it in chronicle chronological order, but backwards. Did I? Uh, you did. Um, make sure you click the in-screen annotations. The bottom left will bring you to the beginning of the R and R playlist back when it was just me and Retro. But the other in-screen annotations will take you to other things that the boss boss and I have done together. The bell icon will notify you when videos come out. Make sure you check out the R and R podcast on all your podcast listening devices. Go over and support us on Spotify. We have gotten the drinking corner the last time I checked to be a four-star podcast. Woo! Which is I don't know what that means. <laughs> absolutely, it means we're four out of five stars. As, oh, a okay. <laughs> as a rating as a rating let that good. let that seek in for a second for how much of a dumpster fire the drinking corner has been on some occasions we're a four out of five star podcast which means at some points we deliver quality entertainment all right have hope in us have some faith in us go check out the drinking corner podcast you can find links for it down in the description below if you're watching on youtube and or description down below on your podcast listening stuff because I had all that information in there. So, yeah. Toodaloo, everybody. Bye, everybody.